I just wanted to say a few words in support of this video just to avoid some comments I know my greenhouse is very dirty and I just wanted to prepare you for it um, there's no excuse no matter how many trips I take or how many hours I work there is no excuse because once you become involved in the orchid hobby you have to go 100% or else you just will not be doing it properly so I apologize now on to the video. Hello everyone, it's Terry again and welcome back to my channel. Um, today is Sunday, no it's Saturday, I'm sorry. Uh, the first weekend after the 4th, and know this video is not on some flipping file, although it's a nice little Trader Joe file that I got, blooming nicely, re-blooming. Um, this video is on the uh, imported Madagascan orchids that I ordered from, well, through um, Botanica Limited, which is uh, an orchid nursery, very good orchid nursery. If you uh, like the rare and unusual, uh, the hard to find um, species and hybrids, uh, very small nursery up there and they do take very good care of their plants and uh, they were organizing a, uh, an importation of cultivated plants from Madagascar and I pre-ordered, as I said in my previous video, so I won't go over that. But this is an update on those plants. Um, where I left the last, the first video, I had just unboxed them. Um, after that, I more or less rehydrated them by, um, the box, inside of the box, there was a lot of, um, live, live spot, uh, live, live moss. And, um, it was advised to keep that on the plants around the roots where it was placed, uh, you know, to help it acclimate the plant to your environment. Uh, because the plants uh, probably didn't have any moisture for that time period that they were in transit, which was upwards of three weeks, I want to say, probably a little bit more than that. Um, but in any event, um, there are a lot of successes and a couple failures. I uh, always expect that. I had went out of vacation. Well, I was leaving out of on vacation the day that I got the email saying that the plants had arrived in San Francisco and were gonna be shipped out that day. Which means that they would arrive on Wednesday following. I wasn't due to be back home here until that following Sunday, which means they would have sat in the box from Wednesday to Sunday. So, and that's what the situation was. So in my mind, I knew that there was gonna be some additional uh, uh, desiccation and just uh, deterioration of the plants due to just all kind of factors they had already said that the plants were tossed around through customs a lot um, anyhow let's get to it there as I said there are lots of successes and there are a couple failures but you know I'll try to talk about the plants uh, and Margaret Smith her channel uh, she has a channel with uh, her garden and her orchid collection and she asked me to give a little bit of cultural information and possibly some pop-ups so I'm gonna do that Margaret East um, so anyway I will start with uh, this plant down here this is an Aranthes which is an angracoid um, epiphytic species uh, plant um, it's a dead on arrival plant um, it, it was pretty much dead uh, I'll probably save that moss pretty much this is what I was doing with it I just sort of laid it there even though I knew it was dead I left the moss uh, this moss which is the moss that I was referring to which is live just kept this around the roots uh, or at the base of the plant and then I kept that misted and moist um, as I said uh, this is Aranthes nidus. this is epiphytic on the trunks of trees with moss uh, from in forests, flowers generally in the wintertime. 
Uh, I'll do a pop-up of what this would look like if it were live, the plant and the flower. Uh, the Aranthes generally have uh, uh, single flowered uh, inflorescence, although it can be sequentially flowered uh, inflorescence as long as it stays green. Uh, the inflorescence will always remain viable, either uh, producing kikis or, or flowers. The plants, the flowers themselves are very translucent, white, green, uh, star-shaped flowers, typical of angry coids. Um, sometimes fragrant, sometimes not, but generally very ghost translucent flowers. And this is, was the same, and I'll put a pop-up there. I'll, but, of course, it's dead on arrival. Uh, what I would say again, um, due to, as I said, I was away, um, I would probably try to get this plant again. I do love all angracoids, and, you know, if I had each and every species, I would be very happy. But anyway, that's Nidus. Uh, again, Ar Aranthes prefer uh, a shadier, uh, sort of a constant moisture at the roots year-round. Uh, and again, I explain their flowering pattern. Okay, the next one, which is over here, this is uh, the Clardia macrocentra. No, macro, back, mac, macro, brac, macrostachia, macrostachia, okay, sorry, macrostachia. Um, and this one is pretty much also dead. I'm not going to touch it, but the base is uh, very weak and, you know, it's very floppy as it sits in its pot. But Pilardia is a coastal epiphyte, very beautiful flower. Um, it's a Vanda growth type, um, continues to get uh, leaves from the crown and then the plant gets larger. It does prefer to be kept moisture around. Um, it can take... Uh, heat. It is from lowland, uh, as I said, the sea, so it does get a considerable amount of water uh, year-round. Uh, maybe a little bit lessening as the crown or the growth stop from the crown, the leaves, the new leaves. But a uh, very beautiful white flower um, on a very long inflorescence. Has a little bit of green in the throat of the lip. A uh, very beautiful thing. Uh, up here, this is uh, uh, another plant that I got in the order. This is Ion Ionia, uh, is it? Ionia rosea. This Ionia rosea is, again, uh, it's an epiphytic species. Um, prefers to either be grown mounted or in baskets. Um, these species again is, is a Madagascar species um, from a very humid, uh, low light environment. Uh, does like daily watering when growing. Uh, again, with these plants, I had it on a tray. This this one on a tray with the moss still on the roots at the base. Um, constantly kept the moss moist and I also would miss the roots, the aerial roots there to make sure that, you know, because that's pretty much how the plant is getting its nutrients is through those aerial roots. So, uh, especially when you get that new plant into your environment, if there are any aerial roots and you have the ability to miss them and maintain the sort of the same philosophy as a vanda. Uh, you water them until the roots turn that color of a green. When that happens, it's being it's well watered. Um, again, these flowers are very small, but there are could be many, several. I shouldn't say many, uh, but they are very pleasing flowers. Um, there is some um, generally it's white with uh, white uh, flower with uh, the petals are green, and there are there's some red in the throat. But, so I did mount this. It is looking pretty well, good on the mount so far. I do try to, these temperatures, the temperatures is this, since I've been mount, since I mounted this, have been in the 90s every day. Um, and then the humidity has risen as well, but 
I still have been out here misting uh, these roots and uh, uh, the chala wood that it is on because I mount, uh, wrap the whole chala wood in the roots um, so they would have something to uh, adhere to. Um, let me see what else. The next plant down here is Jumelia maxillarioides and this these plants are again they are angrycoids. Um, maxillarioids is uh, found in coastal and southeastern Madagascar. It is a warm growing epiphyte or it can be a lithophytic uh, among the rocks. Um, it flowers uh, pretty much single flowered inflorescence from the base um, that arise from the base of the plants. Um, there is fragrance to the plant or to the flowers. And um, I'm being very careful with this plant. I'm keeping the moss moist, um, but I'm not really giving it full on water yet. Um, maybe just every other day, but I do try to keep the, moist, the, the moss moist so that the base and the roots are um, moist as well. But I'm very keeping careful not to get up into this area because this is where crown rot can occur. And that would not be a good thing. Um, again, the flowers are fragrant. They, I think they look like little white birds, but you know, they can be described as a star-shaped, white, pure white, crystalline flower. Very pleasing if you like that sort of thing. Um, Pretty much angry coids are all based on that sort of star-shaped white crystalline, maybe some green in there, um, usually night fragrant. That's uh, uh, maxillarioids, Jumelia. And right across the way here is another one that I got, and this is another Jumelia. This is Punctata. Punctata is also from Madagascar, of course. It is known as the spotted Jumelia. And it's known as the spotted Jumelia because of the foliage. As you can see, the leaf, the base of the leaf, the stem, there are those black spots and it's on every single one that are actively growing. Um, but anyway, it is these plants like it more, uh, these come from the mossy floor of the rainforest. So they do get a bit more moisture. Um, so they, I planted this one in a mixture of mainly moss and bark, but there's a few pieces of lava rock to sort of keep the plant in the pot because it is a fairly large pot. It's probably about maybe a foot and a half now. And um, I think it's really recovering pretty well. And I am watering this and keeping it moist because it does like to be moist. Whereas these over here like to dry out. And so I'm being sparingly watering it until it gets a little bit more acclimated to the environment. These are, I, these are all, uh, uh, part sun to shade lovers um, so that is why I have them fairly low on the ground um, so that they are getting that shade that they prefer um, so that's that one okay the next one that I'm going to show you is another one that I mounted and it is another angry koi and it is up here and this is angry gum filicornu and I mounted this upside down to really help with drainage because it is a very small plant, as you can see. Um, here's my finger. Uh, it's very sort of uh, pencil, really less than a pencil, pencil width, uh, thick, but it's very brittle base. So I'm very taking extra care even in watering. Uh, but again, I left the moss on the roots at the base. This plant pretty much likes it shady. And, and this is a miniature, this will only get a little bit bigger than this, although it does branch off as it gets mature. Blooms in the spring, likes it pretty much uh, moisture at the roots uh, year round, but can take more warmth, more and more tolerant temperatures. Um, that's about it, it's from Eastern Madagascar. Then, probably the piece de resonance 
as I have already stated in my unboxing video, is uh, and great gun. No, it's Aranthes onrichii, and it's actually the name of the plant or the name of the species is, has actually changed to uh, I think it's Uanthe, something like that. But I am old school, and I sort of just keep it real, like how I knew it, how I grew it, or how, not how I grew it, but how I discovered the plant is sort of the name that I keep it. And um, Erisanthe is what the name now is, but it will always be Eranthes. I think that's a much cooler name. But uh, this is how I planted it up. Um, well, potted it up or mounted it, I should say. It's in a basket and it's just sort of wired in there. The roots are very thick um, in there. And uh, every plant that I've ever had uh, with Eranthes, it's you really want them to, because it is all the Vandacious growth habit with most uh, Angricoids. And so you don't want the crown to get affected. You don't want the moisture to stay, stay in the crown too long. Uh, and most angracoids, especially in winter and not in the winter, but in the summer heat, uh, they are from rainforest environments. So uh, they do they do get a lot of fairly a lot of more fairly a large amount of moisture in the uh, the growth months, uh, and then they virtually get none uh, throughout the winter months after their new growths are mature. So. Um, you know, that is something that you have to really be mindful of when you are potting up or mounting uh, plants of these kind that are typically epiphytic, that in nature they do hang down and they do get a lot of rain. Uh, you have to protect the crown. So this is how it is mounted in this basket and it is wired in there to keep it sturdy in the basket. And hopefully those big roots that are buried in that moss that it came with will uh, begin to sprout out. Now the the history, well for me, in, in fact, is I've had two of these before and they've all both left me. Um, and But they were much smaller and uh, my environment was not as uh, up on the culture as it was, as it is now, I should say. My humidity was only getting up to maybe 50 uh, percent in the winter and these like a very humid environment year-round and especially if you're trying to have a mounted plant you will not have success in the home environment unless you are you cannot water it enough to replace the humidity when it needs uh, 70 percent on up upwards year-round no amount of watering that will only just encourage uh, uh, rot so Anyway, uh, I am have, have, having high hopes for this, this plant. The flowers are spectacular. Um, again, it's probably getting too much sun right now, but I will probably move it down a little bit so that it's in a more shadier location, at least initially. But um, the greenhouse is fairly empty now anyway, because uh, I finally got all my plants outside and so there's nothing hanging except for this uh, banda, which I'm kind of keeping here because it's got two double spikes that are coming on. And I don't want uh, the those pesky insects outside to become attracted by the juicy, sweet uh, of what is to come. Just to let you know that is what is to come. So, anyway, that is my update on my Madagascar haul, I do believe. That is all the plants. If I left something out, which I don't believe I did, I will be signing on again, but I don't think so. And you all, have a good day and thanks for watching. Bye.